Welcome everyone to our, our second SHE seminar. Wow. Um, yeah, look, we're really looking forward to getting these back to face-to-face -face seminars, but um, at the moment we just, um, yeah, we're just, uh, you know, trotting along with our, with our webinars. But I'm pretty excited. Look, I've got my sparkly top, got my sparkly top for our seminars. And guess what? Got my sparkly earrings, guys. So I'm um, all here to have a really, really um, exciting, exciting webinar. So um, remember uh, what she's all about. You know, she is about women helping women to um, achieve business success. That's what we're here to do. And um, we're going to, oh, look, someone's told me I look fabulous. There you go. In the, in the chat box. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Therese. Um, so yeah, that's what we're here for today to be able to help, um, you know, to help other women. Um, we've got three great speakers today. Um, remember, our topic is all, all around mindset. And um, we have three very, very special speakers. We've got Belinda Thomas, uh, as some of you may have already met Belinda, founder of Belinda Thomas Inc., uh, and we have uh, Joe Webb and Sue O'Callaghan, um, founders of Impact um, uh, Mental Health. So uh, that you also may have met at some of our sessions. So um, great ladies, uh, collective experience and expertise is just simply impressive. Um, Belinda's going to be sharing her insights uh, regarding uh, emotional intelligent businesses, optimism and success and Joe and Sue about mindset healing and truth aren't those just really beautiful words they are just really beautiful words and uh, one of the things that um, you know I will say to you today is if the words jump out at you you are meant to write them down you know so if words jump out at you write them down this session's recorded, so you don't need to think about all the right furiously, all the notes from the session, because you're going to get a, the session is recorded and you're going to receive it in a few days time. But if something bites you, if something gets your attention, you are meant to hear it, write it down uh, and um, yeah, see where that's, that, that can take you. Uh, and it's just another, another affirmation that you're uh, in the right place. You know, um, I'm no means a, uh, a mindset guru like um, Belinda, Sue and Joe. I'm, I'm not like that at all. Uh, but I am a business owner. I am a business owner. And, um, you know, I became very, very aware of the importance of having a positive, healthy mindset when I didn't have one. So, you know, for me, um, there were lots of things that happened about, about three years into my business um, there were some opportunities that didn't go quite my way. Uh, and I started seeing people that were, you know, other companies that and colleagues that were doing a heck of a lot better for it than, than what I was. And slowly but surely, my confidence drifted. It just, it just, it just drifted. And uh, so my self-talk became a lot more about uh, you failed again instead of, you know, you've learned again. Um, you know, you're not good enough. Um, you know, you're supposed to have all this under control and you don't have all this under control. Uh, and, you know, things are slipping through your fingers. And the one thing that did happen when I had a mindset like that and I didn't deal with that mindset is that the revenue of my business was clearly, clearly uh, in parallel with it. So my business didn't grow. It stayed the same for three years. It just stayed the same revenue for three years because I was stuck in a hole. I was stuck in a hole. And, um, you know, it wasn't until I met um, people like, you know, Joe and Sue and Belinda uh, at, that, that, that gave me some tools to be able to get out of my hole that my business started to get back on track. So, you know, if that's, if that's you at the moment, or that may be you in the future. We don't want you to be there. We don't want you to be there, guys. We want you to all have successful businesses the way you want them and not be stuck. So, you know, you're going to hear today um, some, some strategies, some concepts, some, some coping skills. Um, they've only got 20 minutes each, so you're not going to get, 
you're not going to get every single bit there, but hopefully you're going to get a bit of those things that you're after today um, from our from our grape lineup. And you know, there's going to be questions below as well. So please type those into the chat box and Jordan's going to ask those questions so you're not stuck in the same Rosina hole um, that I was I was stuck in. So guys, um, at the end of the session, we're also going to talk about our free giveaway that we've been promoting a little bit more and our next webinar in October. So we just don't stop. We just don't stop. We just keep going, going, going. So um, enough about me. I want to introduce our first really school, cool speakers, Joe and Sue. Um, take it away, guys. I want to hear lots around um, mindset, healing and truth. I'm looking forward to it. Been looking forward to this all week. Thank you. You. Hey Rosina, thank you so much first of all for inviting us on board and welcome to everyone that's here. We are excited because our passion is mental health and we run a business as well so combining the two for us it, we're just so excited to be here. So who are we? We are founders of Impact Mental Health, we are authors of the book Hate Myself, Hate My Life, A Teenage Guide to Finding Self-Confidence and Inner Love and we are also podcast host at Pods with Posh and Paul, set up to disrupt the theory that everyone has got perfect lives. So I'm the Sue. Um, I've got a background in a teaching career. I've taught in Singapore, the UK, Australia and New Zealand. I spent 15 years raising teenagers as a boarding house mistress, hundreds of teenagers. I taught restorative justice in UK prisons, mainly to murderers and women murderers, and you might understand women aren't naturally murderers. You can imagine their stories of trauma and pain and suffering. I then went on to set up in, uh, my own company called Teenage Toolbox, working with teens in suicidal ideation, self-harm, and have gone on the last eight years to work with clients, couples, singles, individuals in trauma-based therapy. So it's a little about me, and I'd love to introduce you to Jo. Hi everyone, I'm the Joe part of Joe and Sue, and I'm a single mum of 14, four teenagers. Yeah, well, no, actually one twenties, one's just out of that. So single mum, but I'm also a business owner. I've owned hospitality businesses in the past, and then lots of things hit me mindset wise, and I went on a different journey to find self love, and that's when I retrained to be a life coach. I set up my business, The Happiness Hustler, which I thought I'd be dealing with all women my age, which I do, but I also deal with a lot of teenagers as well who are in angst. And basically both Sue and I mentor and coach all around mindset, all about healing from trauma, looking at our past, finding out what is holding us back. What are them limiting beliefs that have been put upon us and what's holding us back in life and in business. And we're so excited to talk to you today because it's such a passion of ours. We all carry pain and trauma with us. We all have limiting beliefs and it's something that we can work through to get over so we can be the ultimate, ultimate successfully people we want to be. It's usually us holding us back, which is great to know, very empowering. So here we, I will hand you over to Sue, who we're going to introduce a video, aren't we, Sue, first? Symptoms of trauma, hyperarousal, constriction, disassociation, or denial, hypervigilance, intrusive imagery, or flashbacks, nightmares and night terrors, abrupt mood swings, temper tantrums, frequent anger, or crying. Panic attacks, anxiety and phobias, depression and feelings of impending doom, shame and lack of self-worth, inability to love, nurture, or bond with other individuals. And last but not least, reenactment of the trauma. Trauma doesn't know a color, trauma doesn't know an age, Trauma doesn't know a tax bracket. Trauma doesn't know any of these things. Anybody can be traumatized in anybody. Trauma doesn't discriminate. And we know from much trauma therapy and trauma research that we would identify 100% of our population carrying trauma to some degree. 
My own particular intense area of trauma was in child abduction. And in 2015, I published my book, which was Taken. And Taken tells the story of my one-year-old, my three-year-old, and my five-year-old being taken from me when I was pregnant with my fourth child and then being told I would lose my baby at birth and never get to hold her. So my story in the book unfolds over a year and the significant impact it had on my life was something that I couldn't actually put into words. It was, it was enormous and it put onto me terror. When I associate with the behaviors just talked about in the little video clip, I would say I suffered nightmares, panic attacks, anxiety, trust issues, lack of self-worth, frequent crying and shame. So as we know, trauma doesn't discriminate. We're gonna watch the second part of the little video clip we've got for you. And as we listen to it, what we're really keen that you do is just identify some of the associated behaviors you are carrying through in your life. So we just watch the second part now just coming on. Isolation, inability to love. Addictive behavior. Insomnia. Depression. Hypervigilance. Avoidance. Shame. Addictive behavior. Shame. Panic attacks. Depression. Isolation. Shame. Inability to be loved. Depressing. You needed the support when you were a little boy. You needed to be seen, you needed to be held, you needed to be loved. And what happened was your mom and your dad, they just couldn't do it. And there's no shame. There's no shame in what they did because they were doing the best that they could. There's no shame and there's no blame. And as Zena said at the beginning, if there's any words that resonate with you, through this webinar, just write them down because it will touch you in some way. There's no blame, there's no shame. And I have to admit that there is no blame having been on my healing journey from my own story. There is no blame attached to anyone for the situation that I found myself in. I've had to free myself from that. But what is trauma? Let's have an understanding of what trauma is. Trauma comes from a Greek word, which means open wound. And if you think of an open wound, an open wound is raw, it's painful, and it bleeds. Where does trauma come from? Trauma is associated with an emergency that happens to our physical being, our psychological being, our emotional or our spiritual well-being. And when we think of trauma, we often think of the big trauma. So on one end of the spectrum over here, we've got the major tsunamis, we've got the mass shootings, we've got rapes. And on the other end of the spectrum, if we go back to our earliest childhood memories or our even subconscious, it might well have been that our mother was pregnant and carrying depression. It might have been our parents believed in controlled crying, whereas we as a small baby were put and left to cry and our needs were not met. When we wanted attachment, we felt rejection and carry insecurity and fear. We know that if our parents were divorced when we were a small child, we will go on and 60 years later increase the risk of having a stroke by double. We understand that male victims of sexual abuse are three times more likely to have a heart attack in later life and multiple increase on suicide. So trauma affects us in such a huge way. Eckhart Tolle says that when we are in fact impacted by trauma, we carry it with us permanently as something he calls a pain body. And he says, if you imagine your kidneys, your liver, a heart, your organs inside your body, also imagine an organ inside your body that sits maybe somewhere here in your chest, called a pain body, and put a color to it. So mine's black. My trauma body from many traumas, but particularly having my children abducted, is black and it sits here. And at any stage in my life, it can be triggered. When it gets triggered, I go into the fight flight or freeze mode and often if it's a child situation you can't run away if you're being abused or you're being hit you cannot run away and you cannot um, flee from the situation so what happens or you can't fight back so what happens is you freeze 
My response is to fight back and it is also to freeze depending on the different situation. But I then move into coping mechanisms and we're gonna look at different types of coping mechanisms, but normally from a major trauma, from a pain body, it will trigger coping mechanisms which are unhealthy or maladaptive, such as substance abuse, addiction, self-sufficiency, self-harm, avoidance, blame, relationship issues, or even self-sabotage. So Joe's just going to unravel how that um, might affect our business in terms of what we're carrying through if we don't deal with it. Yeah, I know this seems like a really heavy thing to go into when we're in a nice, lovely business seminar and we're trying to help, but it's a real understanding of understanding that our traumas and our pain, it doesn't matter, they don't have to be as big as what Sue said. It's not about comparison. It's what we really want you to all understand. Your pain or your past traumas are yours and they're really important and they will possibly be affecting you if you haven't healed or if you haven't been made aware of them. Because unhealed trauma and old limit old limiting beliefs can affect us in so many ways and they will impact us in our life and in business and at the end of the day we're one person so whoever we are in life it will come into our business ultimately unhealed pain and trauma will inhibit us and often it is in the unconscious because these are things that have happened within childhood and we've just got coping mechanisms to deal around to deal with them and they're just there and we're living each life but when we're in business what is it that we're thinking of what is it we want you're all here you're either entrepreneurs or you're working within organizations obviously means a lot to you and so awareness is key understanding where our limiting beliefs and our thoughts where they originated from you know Rosina said lovely things at the beginning like what the things that were going around her head when she was stuck in business you know is that voice in your head saying things to you I'm not good enough I don't know enough I'm not qualified enough I need to go and get this qualification that qualification and then I'll be fine and I don't have enough time I don't have enough money I don't have enough love and who am I to think that I deserve success that voice inside our head can be pretty mean and then voices are usually there from things that have happened to us in the past and it's just having that awareness to know to go back and have a look look at it everything we do is to usually to stop us from avoid from experiencing more pain so our body's quite clever it brings these things in that you know the coping mechanisms stopping us from perhaps going from that promotion because we're fearful of rejection we're fearful of hearing the answer no because then it will make us question our worth are we good enough and that might have originated back from the past like what sue was saying one of my earliest traumas was my dad going to prison when i was 12 years old that wasn't actually the major trauma believe it or not it was when he came out of prison and then i became his parent but what he did was he didn't go out and get a job he didn't do anything to try and make ends meet instead he lived in a depressive state for 10 years and so I didn't feel good enough because I didn't feel like my dad didn't go out and try and stack shelves or clean toilets for me it wasn't about me it was about him and his past traumas and I can see that now as an adult but that's come into my businesses along the way as well as my personal life it brings up those feelings of not feeling worthy of having a poverty mindset always questioning my self-worth and I think as women we're so prone to them kind of behaviors and those kind of thoughts so I we just want you to have a little think about what is it in your business that where do you want success and what is holding you back because the there's answers in all of this in some of your past pain in some of your past trauma and some of it might not be from childhood it might be from yesterday it might be from today but it will come up and it will be packaged slightly different but it will keep coming up and up and up in business. And we don't want anything to hold you back. We want this to start making some bells ring in your head and for you just to have a little think about where perhaps you might need to start your healing journey. And it is hard, but it's very much worth it. So healing is such a big word and somebody might say to you, have you done your healing journey? Just think, I've got no idea what that looks like. But Joe and I say that all these various traumas and hurts that happen to you fill up your bucket and you've got so much hurt and pain in it. 
And the way to get it out is by filling the bucket up with really good things. And healing has to always be multidimensional. So for you to thrive in work, for you to reach maximum potential, for you to build healthy relationships, for you to financially hit breakthrough, we want you to be your healthiest version of yourself. So it's not only emptying and healing past traumas, but as Joe says as well, it's actually dealing with every day issues that arrive, arise and recognizing where they're coming from. So healing must be multidimensional. And the def definition of healing is developing a sense of wholeness that involves physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, financial freedom, which is what we want for your work. So I've got seven quick tools for you. If any resonate with you, then write them down because where do you start with the healing process? The first one, which if we go back to trauma-informed therapy and work and research in trauma is number one is safety. You must be safe to do your healing work. So if it's talking therapy, Joe and I would say with our clients, do you feel safe on the first session with your therapist? If not, see somebody else, you must feel safe. Also, you must be psychologically safe. If you're in an abusive relationship, then you need to be in a safe home to do that journey. Talking therapy, really important. Cognitive behavioral therapy, DBT, transaction analysis, EMDR. Again, make sure you're safe with the therapist to go on the journey with them because it's, it is about trust. When you have been harmed in some way, you have not been safe, you've been violated. So the most important thing is that your space in every aspect of your life is safe to go on that journey. The one thing that's really underestimated is the third one that we have on the list which is quiet time we don't have quiet time in our life to do our healing we're busy at work we're writing future business plans we're organizing webinars online and zoom for lockdown we're trying to be on social media and up the number of clients that we've got and followers and email lists. We're busy the whole time, we don't stop. And we're also carrying the noise and the violation of trauma in the background or relationship that's struggling. So quiet time, really essential. If you go for a walk, turn off the podcast, be in quiet healing time, be in meditation, be in yoga, but have time, even if it's reading a book, your quiet time reading a book where you're in the the lo you're lost in the story of the novel is better than being on a device catching up on social media. Quiet time, really important. Number four is lifestyle change. So we know we, we are what we eat, implement a healthy diet. We are how much we exercise, build exercise into the regime. Really important for successful business, healthy mind, healthy bo body. You cannot separate the two. If your business is not thriving, have a look at your exercise and, and food regime. And is that helping you? Our senses are natural body mechanisms to heal our body. So what do I smell? What do I see? What can I touch? What do I hear? What can I taste? Drop a few healing oils, essential oils in the shower in the morning. It takes two seconds to put them in, doesn't take much time. And breathing them in, being in the present moment, absorbing the day, thinking about the day before you start. Hearing the birds, the birds song in the morning. Birds, as they release their bird song, their sound opens the stomata in plants to allow the plants to breathe. You can go through an exercise where you just hear the bird song and do a breathing exercise in being gratitude for the day. So number five was our senses. Six is creativity. What we're doing with our hands, being in garden, touching, being in tune with nature, whether we are in carpentry, sewing, whatever it is we love doing, painting, relaxation. When we create, we heal our body. Even if it's sweeping the floor as opposed to hoovering the floor, it's a natural body mechanism to heal. The repetitive movements is a healing mechanism for our body. And the last one is gratitude. We all know the power of gratitude. If you haven't got a diary, write down three to 10 things. Each day you can be in gratitude for it changes your life. It brings you to the present moment. It takes you out of um, trauma from the past. It takes you away from fear of the future. It brings you back to this moment. Then be in gratitude for the amazing things that have happened in business today. Even if it's just one new contract that you've looked at today, as opposed to five things that have gone wrong. Joe always says when we get a rejection from work, we're going to get five people to accept us. So turn everything negative in your business into a positive and write down the business successes you've had for the day. And on that, I'm just going to leave you with a quote by an extraordinary guy who works in trauma research, Jack Cornfield, and he says, trauma doesn't get healed unless the grief and the suffering is actually honored. Do you honor yourself in that grief? and that process. Take some time to honor yourself and the suffering you've been through. 
And then there's a, there's a quote just on the screen now as well. And this is really what we want to say to you all. Trauma is a fact of life. It does not, however, have to be a life sentence. So to bring it all back together in a business sense, we want you to have a think, you know, the lovely tips what Sue's just given you. And we've given you a bit of information about trauma, about pain, about limiting beliefs, where they perhaps could have come from, to have a think about your life. Because I know Belinda's going to think about now and the future. We're just taking you a little bit on the past journey. So, you know, have a think about your business. What is it in your business that is currently not where you want it to be? Are you experience, in, experiencing financial lack, perhaps like what Rosina was? You know, go and have a look about your money mindset. Have a think about that. Have you got a poverty mindset? Did you have a, a thing put on you when you were younger? There was something like, I know for a fact, I was brought up in working class circumstances in the UK and the rich people didn't seem to be that kind. So I had to really get over that poverty mindset to understand that I deserved money. I also had to get over my rejection issues to be able to go out there and put ourselves on the line and say, would you please come on our podcast? I had to get over the fact that somebody at school told me I couldn't write, that I wasn't very good at English to write a book. So we've all got some past trauma in us, which is holding us back from doing what we want to do. And don't get me wrong, as coaches, Belinda will probably agree, we have to work on this ourselves each and every day. I have a coach, Sue has a coach. I'm sure Belinda will say she has a coach. It doesn't end, it carries on. So have a look, you know, uh, do you want that promotion, but you're too frightened to go to, to to go for it what's holding you back is it a fear of rejection because perhaps you were rejected you perhaps you walked in one day and your dad was busy and he didn't look up from his newspaper and therefore you felt not worthy these are such small things that could have happened to us in the past or they might be massive go and have a look so i'll just leave you with a couple three more tips before we go one more minute of talking and then we'll pass you over to belinda journal everything out when you get off this webinar if you've got time get a pen and paper or your journal whatever it is, and do a massive brain dump if you can have a think about have a timeline through history of all the pain and trauma you could have gone through could have been losing your teddy bear as a kid it could have been your mum and dad didn't meet your love languages at home it doesn't have to be rape pillage and war and famine it can be the smaller things as well but it can be the bigger things and then just write it all down because awareness is the first step to healing. If we're gonna bury everything and forget it, we can't, we can't move forward. So write it all down, get it all out from here and out from here and put it on pen and paper. And then spend time in quiet. As Sue said, your quiet is so important. Make sure you spend some time in quiet each and every day. And I know as mums and as busy entrepreneurs, it's very, very hard, I get that. It's a juggle, life is a whole big juggle. But, you know, two minutes of quiet is better than no quiet. So if you can spend some time in quiet for you, whether that's a walk on the beach or a meditation or journaling, whatever it is, however it looks for you, yoga pose, I don't care, do it for you. And then number three, write the two areas down in your business, which is holding you back, where you know that it keeps happening over and over again. There's something just stopping you. There's a block there. And then start try to piece the jigsaw pieces together from everything you've wrote down go back along your timeline and think where that limiting belief may have started because when we can go back to the beginning of the timeline and we can start that healing there it all gels together way quicker and we can start knocking those limiting beliefs out the way and we can start moving forward with self-love and self-awareness and self-worth and self-respect so i hope that's helped today be aware be honest be raw be real we send you our love and we wish you well okay thank you thank you joe and sue for those amazing tools uh in a very very rapid quick session you gave us so much thank you um look it just reminds me of something that someone said to me that my mindset my current mindset will never outperform my business and that's exactly what happened you know when i had quite frankly a shit mindset i had a shit business uh, so you've just made me remember that. Thank you, um, Joe and Sue. Okay, over to you, Belinda. Uh, we're going to talk about emotionally intelligent businesses. So look forward to hearing about that. Take it away, Belinda. Thank 
Thank you. I've completely forgotten how to introduce myself because I was really um, listening very intently to John. So. <laughs> So thank you both very much for that, Rosina. Thank you. Um, I actually, you know what? I've met lots of people on here already. Um, so I'm almost looking around thinking, who is it? I don't know, because I feel like I want to, you know, say hi to your face properly in life. It's funny seeing names. Anyway, but um, so great to kind of see you here again. And I'm Belinda. For those I haven't met, Belinda, Belinda Thomas, founder of Belinda Thomas Inc. I've created the Leadership Lift which is my online leadership academy. Oh, I'm, my background is in psychology. Um, I left that and went into the financial markets for quite a long time. I've been a business owner and it was through sport that I was coached and I came to coaching, which I really liked. Um, the coaching I do, it's interesting, Joe brought it up. I'm accredited with the International Coach Federation. So for me, as part of my professional ethics and professional standards, I have to have supervision and mentoring. So it's very much in line with um, the same sort of standards that you have in psychology. So it's great Joe brought that up because it is actually a thing. And I love seeing my mentor and um, seeing my supervisor. So get help. None of us need to do this alone. We are so much better when we're doing all these things together. So emotionally intelligent business. And I get, I'm going to, I'm doing my own timekeeping and I'm, I'm giving anyone permission to tell me when I've hit my 20 minutes because it's, it feels like a really light touch to talk about something that I'm really passionate about. So I guess I want to say, I've got some slides and I'm going to share my screen with you now. The reason I've got slides is, and that's strange, it looks like it might be about to do something weird. We'll get back to page one. The reason I've got slides is to keep me on track. So we're going to talk about emotionally intelligent business. It's your IQ that will get you started, but it is your EQ that will make you successful. So there are differences between the two, and normally I'd want a show of hands as to who's familiar with that, but we'll move into this. Your IQ, your intelligence, you get given at birth, and barring head injury or major trauma, it is pretty much the same right throughout your life, although, you know, we know some really bright people who don't use their IQ all of the time. Uh, your personality type, you get your dominant personality type at birth, same thing, and you'll have some shoulder personality types, but pretty much you'll stay inside that bracket, again, barring major uh, trauma like a head injury. And then you get your emotional intelligence, and it's learned. It's totally learned, and that's such a wonderful thing because it changes throughout your entire life. And I often think about, you know, kids have those height charts, and it's like, oh, you're five centimeters taller, or, you know, my boys are six foot two now. Um, and you think, what growing have they done on the inside in the last year? And they may have learned to be kinder. They may, may have learned some empathy. They may have developed a uh, sense of consequences and consequential thinking. And that's them learning emotional intelligence as they get over older, which I think is really, really cool. Thing about it though, when I say it's 100% learnable, just because you learn it, it doesn't mean you actually use it. You know, it's something we all have, it's something we all have the potential to be using, but it doesn't mean you actually do it. And there are some really interesting trends coming out of that globally at the moment. Um, the other thing I want to say about emotional intelligence is that it's measurable. So it is something I'm very involved with, the development of surveys of emotional intelligence, which is, oh, we, we can talk about that another time. It's really, really cool stuff. So I want to bust some myths about emotional intelligence. Um, emotional intelligence gets confused with empathy and, um, and empathy is a part of your emotional intelligence but it is not your emotional intelligence. Empathy as well isn't about being nice. Um, I'm very empathetic. I, I wouldn't say I'm nice. <laughs> I think that sounds like a slightly slightly different thing. And optimism which is what we're talking about today and optimism that actually makes me really sad because people confuse optimism with toxic positivity. And people say, oh no, we can't be optimistic here, we need to be realistic. And that's bullshit, it is such bullshit, and it breaks my heart when I hear it. Because optimism is not about ignoring 
realities. It's about being, um, you know, being hopeful, looking for better solutions and looking for better ways of doing things. And there are two times when I see people in business who are really locked down on optimism. And one is when their business is failing and they can't see their way out. And the other is, and this is the irony, the other is when they're really, really successful and they're stuck and they can't think of ways to actually expand and be better and do things differently because success is not always a great teacher. The other biggest myth, and I wish I could get you guys to answer this one, but the other biggest myth, and Jordan, with love and respect, because you're the man in the room at the moment, uh, as women, we are taught a lot to leave our emotions at the door when we come to work. We're told, don't be emotional. Uh, we need to be rational about this or this one. Oh, let's look at the facts. And you can see it makes me want to sort of do funny old men voices. Um, the number of times for a lot of us that we've sat somewhere and someone says, oh, well, you know, I had a funny feeling about that. It's like, man, why didn't you listen to that feeling? That was a bit of data. All of those emotions you're thinking, what is it they're trying to tell us? So emotional intelligence is about using this is going to make it sound really boring um, and a bit too scientific, perhaps, but it's about being smart with your emotions and using them as a strategic resource for good. So what is emotional intelligence? There we are. Aligning your thoughts, feelings and actions for good, using your superpowers for good, because you girls all know you've got superpowers. And it's your self-awareness. Self-awareness is made up of your emotional literacy, your ability to articulate emotions. Um, it's also made up of your passion recognition, and that's the self-awareness that Sue and Joe are talking about. It's recognizing those habits and understanding when they come up. And this is where optimism plays in so beautifully, because if you recognize your habits and you don't think they can change, you will be stuck. If you optimistically can say, yep, I can do things differently, uh, even if it's hard work, then you can make those changes. And the uh, choose yourself, that's how you choose to act and being intentional about uh, the actions you take and your reasons, purpose and your empathy comes into that one as well. So that's more about how you give and what you put out. So this is a really light touch and we're looking at emotional intelligence in business and honestly it is that the reason I chose optimism is because it is the difference that makes the difference it is you know people say do the smallest thing that'll make a difference for you thinking optimistically is that oh sorry I'm having a, a minor tech thing so what is optimism and why is it so important Oh, I've got the faceless guy there. Optimism is a mental attitude characterized by hope and confidence. It's about believing that you can be successful. Um, it's about believing that things can be positive and that things can be different. So as I said, we um, do measurements in this and it's quite fascinating. The uh, profiling tools I use, they're validated over between 60 and 70,000 people. So it's staunchly validated, really well calibrated. Eight times more likely to solve problems proactively and efficiently, uh, sorry, efficiently, to make better decisions, to have a better community and have better relationships professionally as well. So that's inside and outside of work. And again, talking, you know, Joe and Sue talking about that authenticity of something's happening in one part of your life, chances are it's happening in another part of your life. That's why having that optimism is so valuable. Also being able to communicate about differences more easily and having increased well-being, satisfaction and achievement. So I don't know if we've got any Australians in the room. Um, oh, Ava, I, I think, you no. Your European, gosh, I'm trying to think who's who. Um, but Australia, we when we correlate information with the World Health Organization on well-being and emotional intelligence, Australia actually rates as one of the most thriving nations in the world on those two scores. And I want to believe that New Zealand is right up there as well. And the not so good news. Um, 
who had a shitty year last year? I mean, I, I'm not going to use the language right now that I want to use thinking about last year. And there's a whole lot of it for anyone who's Auckland still going on right now. The pandemic sucked. It, it sucked the freaking life out of us. It sucked the optimism out of us. And empathy also went right down. So they went down just over 5% off the top of my head. Um, and this came out of research that was done on a poll of 127,000 people across a range of nat nations, and then came down to looking really closely at about 30,000 people. So just when we needed it most, optimism locked down. And I'm mean, actually I want to talk about before we move on to that model, and I'm keeping an eye on the time. I just want to talk about that a little bit because it is a really natural reaction to have to lock down on optimism when the going gets tough it's a survival mechanism because we want to be dealing we want to have our feet on the ground we want to be dealing with what is happening very immediately and not so far on the horizon so we just don't think there uh, so I just want you to bear that in mind if you are feeling like you're a bit locked down at the moment especially for those people in lockdown um, it's really natural but it is a genetic it's genetic wiring that actually doesn't serve us very well. Not anymore, not now. We're not having to outrun tigers, for example. This model of optimism is one I want to give you. And I just want to give you a few quick models, actually, and quick things you can ask yourself. Um, write them down if you want to. But actually, what I'll do after this is I'll fire these slides through to Holly and Rosina, um, and they can whip them out to anyone and honestly use them like you stole them they're yours um, use them for anything that you'd like to so when you're thinking about how to be more optimistic or you're in a situation that you do not like uh, and this is me in lockdown my optimism is really challenged at the moment I want to be really clear on this I am doing this work for myself um, this situation will pass and it will, we don't know when, um, but it is hugely unlikely we will be in this situation forever. And the other thing is, even if, um, you know, the difference between optimism and toxic positivity, everything's not going to be beautifully sunny and rosy tomorrow, we know that. But I can be optimistic to think that the situation is changing all the time, and as it changes, there's the potential for it to be better. Isolated, it's only an isolated event. It is only one part of my life. I'm 50, I've got the most amazing boyfriend and my two kids at home. Um, so while lockdown and these things are pretty shitty, there are really other things in my life that are really fantastic. And this is what we do in business. We think, ah, what was it? Um, I've lost a contract. I love that. I've lost one contract, but five more are going to come in. It's like, I've lost a contract. Shit, 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 shit. I'm a failure. Everything's gone tits up. And this is a total disaster. It's actually only one very small part of my business. There are a lot of other things that are going incredibly well. So sometimes just thinking about that isolated event and calling it what it is is really useful. And effort. And with effort, you can change parts of the situation. Because wouldn't it be nice if you could just sit in your chaff and everything would be done for you? The bad news, it is going to take you some effort. The good news is the more you practice optimism in your business, the better it's going to be. So clue the effort is simple um, as being a guided missile and choosing good thoughts. So if I was to ask you right now not to think about um a, a green apple and don't think about a green apple our subconsciouses don't process negatives very well so you're working really hard not to think about a green apple but i know you are um, so you do need to make some effort to choose really good thoughts so the top tip what could go right and the reason I've written dot, dot, dot is not because I'm thinking about something spicy or saucy or sexy, which any of you know me, know that's a, definitely got the potential. But the dot, dot, dot is the fact that we can't bullshit ourselves. We need to, when we think about what could go right, we need to be realistic. We need to find something that we can believe. So when you're exercising optimism in your business and you're looking, and this is especially true when you're doing strategic planning, because we're taught to be relentlessly optimistic and aim for the stars. And it's really important because the view does get better and better and better. 
all the way up. But at the same time, we've got to believe it. So that dot, 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 what that means is find something that you can actually really believe in and use that. And then next, what would it take for that to happen? And again, dot, 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 dot. Because the more you explore, optimistically, explore the things that can go right, the more likely you are to make those happen. So use those dot, dot, dots to explore and uh, to play with that a little bit. And a framework, and this is a, this is a final one for you, uh, the framework for making better decisions and taking better actions is to ask yourself, what am I feeling? What is that emotion telling me? What is the information that I can use? Um, what, and fear, if you feel fear, it's like, that's great. That is absolutely fine because fear is a protection response and it's really important for us to have it. Some people say, oh, that's a bad emotion. I mean, that's bullshit. Emotions aren't good or bad. They're just all different. And thinking, what is that fear trying to tell me? Oh, maybe I need to be a bit careful. Uh, what options do I have? And that's when that optimism, optimism come in, comes in. Um, and it may be, you know, big one for me recently, what options do I have? I have the option of working with a VA and my virtual assistants on this call. And I can tell you that was one of the best decisions I've made in a really, really long time. And the other is what do I truly want? And this is when it's a great time to notice if you're just shooting all over yourself. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I should be doing something else because that tends to not be true and it tends not to work. So what do I truly want? I truly, actually, I right now in this afternoon and I'm going to do it, I truly want to go for that walk that Joe and Sue are talking about and just having that quiet and turning the podcast off. Um, what do I truly want? I truly want my business not to be running my life. Um, I truly want, actually, there's a lot of things I truly want, but it's thinking about going back to your dot, dot, dots. What do I need to do to make that happen? So that's all a really simple model. Um, it's such a light touch on it, but I really love it because it doesn't actually have to be that complicated. I'm going to turn this screen share off. Um, there you are. What did you learn when we use those techniques and what are your top takeaways? But I'm going to turn this off now so I can say, say goodbye to you properly. Jump into the chats and ask any questions. Um, and honestly, I promise you, when we talk about strategic uh, strategy and strategic thinking and running businesses, and there's so much information and sometimes it's so complicated, it doesn't have to be. Sometimes just using those really, really simple models is what will get you ahead and make you wildly successful on your terms and whatever that means for you. Thank you. Jump in the chat and um, we'll, yeah, we'll answer your questions. Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you speakers. Uh, that um, was absolutely amazing. And again, you know, women supporting women to achieve business success. Uh, again, we've done it today. So look guys, um, please put questions in. We're gonna have question time in just a minute. I'll give you oh, a moment to, deep, uh, to you know, breathe deeply and get those questions going. Um, look, while you're doing that, I just quickly want to uh, say just a couple of things. Um, just by attending and being here at this webinar, we wanted to support you more. So all of you attending will get our uh, first um, uh, a, a first session of our m, &M program for free. So that's our first marketing fundamental session for free. And believe me, these are things that if you don't get right, your business will not go right. Uh, so it's a 20 minute uh, video with heaps and packed full of uh, uh, support in terms of frameworks and um, how to's. Uh, so it just sort of gently just guides you through it. So that's coming to you free um, uh, today, actually. Now, if we're gonna send it to the email that you registered for this webinar. So if it's another email you'd like us to send it to, please put it in the chat, but that's coming to you today, the first session of our m, &M program uh, for free. In a couple of days, you're gonna get the recording as well as Belinda's notes as well. Um, so you can, because this has just been packed full of goodness, eh? Just so packed full of goodness. So 
um, I imagine you know we we probably need to go through it and 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 hear it again. So uh, just quickly, do we have any questions, guys? Do we have any questions, Jordan? Do we have questions? What are they, please? Hello. Um, first of all, fantastic. I was uh, very impressed. I may have been the only man in the in the <laughs> Zoom, but. It doesn't mean I didn't get any value out of it. I thought it was uh, very interesting, and you, and all three of you are very uh, genuine. I found it was a very authentic conversation. So, um, no, no uh, questions in the chat just yet. Um, I just had a, a couple of things. I guess I wanted to say. Um, I, I felt like the brain dump idea was really good, and um, probably the way that I do that is I actually do a. a an audio version so i just say what i want to say because you can kind of keep it on a recording you can kind of hear you can hear yourself you can hear your emotion you can feel it in the moment and uh having a podcast background i kind of just do a podcast one minute a day and it's just me telling me how i'm feeling and you can kind of reflect on that and that's really been beneficial so i can definitely resonate with that and the and the quiet time like you guys were talking about as well it's just uh, it's not I don't get enough of it and I'm sure a lot of people on the call don't get enough of it either so um and then just Belinda with the staying optimistic and I find instead of falling into being pessimistic or you know having pessimism as dominate the the optimism it's actually really tricky sometimes and COVID you're right it really has made that difficult and I'm sure a lot of people on the call it's been really hard as well so um yeah no questions through but beautiful content and uh yeah, that's enough from me, I reckon. I'll hand it back to you, Rosina. Looking forward to seeing everyone on the uh, October. Yeah, so look, our October one is taking this mindset. We're still going to stay on mindset, but this time it's going to call, be called Mindset in Action. So it's about um, us in breakout groups and doing some, some work in breakout groups and then coming together as a team. So in our breakout groups, it's about women supporting women. Um, and we're going to be led by Joe and Sue around that as well. So some more times, you know, action, you know, the talk, talk fest is going to be over. Although I've got to say it's damn good talk fest today. Uh, but we want to actually do that some, some things in action. And um, so we're going to get you um, to be able, you know, to be able to do that with the, uh, the virtual um, support of a breakout room. So um, um, I do have a quick question. One of the things that I found um, one of my coping, bad coping mechanisms was, was perfection. I thought I had to be perfect because if I was perfect, I was going to get perfect results. Any words of wisdom for the perfectionist and the control freaks in the room? Uh, where those, I love to answer that. <laughs> Yeah, with those uh, those habits, all those habits do is yeah. end in you being unperfect. <laughs> so, any any yeah. words of advice for our perfectionists and control freaks? At Impact Mental Health, we always say a perfectionist is trying to find a sense of control in their environment where they have lost control. And often perfectionists too will tie in with high anxiety, the need to get things right. Mm. Because at some stage in your life, things were not right and things were out of control. So at Impact Mental Health and the work that we do with clients, we would say your coping mechanism and the manifestation of your behavior is always a result of the roots in your tree that are underground. So an apple tree won't grow lemons, an orange tree won't grow grapes. So if you have your roots underground that are in feeling out of control, what grows on the tree is the need to control and the need for perfectionism. So we would say, change the roots, address the trauma, go back into your childhood and say, when did I feel out of control? What's my first ever memory of feeling out of control? And if it was a three-year-old girl where daddy left home, and left mommy on her own, then go and pick up your three-year-old girl and hug her as an adult and say, Rosina, as a three-year-old child, I'm gonna hug you. I know you don't feel safe. What were your needs? Your needs were to feel safe, to feel in control. I've got my arms around you now and I'm holding you. You don't need to have to control it yourself. There's something bigger than you that will control it. There's the universe, there's God, there's a bigger picture. You can just let things go and you can accept the fact that in life, not everything works out the way you want. And you can actually let go and let be and the failures and the mistakes are where the growth comes 
where the beauty is in the vulnerability and in letting go you can actually grow your business and grow you to a much further level than you'd ever been at before if you don't control it and just let it be and go with the failures and see where they lead you and that's the growth great i love that i think that's amazing i want to offer a really simple one as well and i believe you do need to do the work um when you're working with perfection and particularly perfectionism in teams it is the enemy of uh, productivity you will never get ahead and never get anything done and quite often in a business environment decide on the purpose of something so if you're writing a document what is the purpose of it is it to communicate or is it to influence or what is its job for example or if you're having a meeting, what is the job of this meeting? And once you've set that purpose and you have the meeting or you write the document, you can look at it and you can say, does it fulfill this purpose? And mm -hmm. if it does, put it down and stop. You don't need to keep tweaking it for days and days and days. So it's just a really simple little one. Still do the work, but in a business environment, there's a really quick cure for yeah. perfectionism holding you back one last thing perfection doesn't actually exist it's one of the best bits of advice i was given perfection mm. doesn't exist it's not even a thing you can be perfect for one second and the next second it's not if you say yes to something you'll figure out how you'll always find a way if you back up against a wall you can always succeed to so look back at all the times that you have and perfectionism sometimes is just a cover-up as well for something it's a fear it's a fear mm. that of rejection it's a fear that it's a fear of hearing the word no and that comes from traumas and pains as well but often it's um you know we might want to get the fancy website up and running and we might want to have our course made before we can go out and market it then somebody might not buy it and then therefore the, all that stuff and hard work and all that perfectionism so mm. perfection doesn't exist and you're all wonderful just as you are well see guys i've just been supported this is what she's all about so thank you guys i think one of the words that someone said to me when i was going through my perfectionist control freak stage she said to me rosina it's not perfection it's progress yeah. and that's kind of one of my mantras that i have each day when i can feel myself knitting up tight uh and wanting that perfect um and achievable standard so thank you guys and thank you for helping me through that one again um okay guys thank you it's been great we look forward to talking to you on the 26th of october at 2 p.m please we're going to send a survey out we want to make these more real for you and best for you so please uh, make sure you send out those surveys because we're just wanting to make this experience worth the hour that you give up of your really really busy time so thank you. Thank you again, my amazing guest speakers, Joe, Sue and Belinda. You are absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be the community that we've got without you. So thank you. And thanks, Jordan, for um, helping bringing all this technical stuff together as well. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.